every one of you for coming out and uh, want to introduce you to uh, the speaker today, um, Pastor London. How many of you guys know Pastor London? He's a, a great friend of mine, and honestly, I think he's um, one of the best preachers in, in America. I want you to come and present the word for us today. All right, God bless everybody today. Uh, I know that I need to move this up here. I won't be before you long. I'm not a long winded preacher, so I say. But the play, man, I know God, but that, you know, I felt that. You know, the scripture says that hell was not prepared for man, but Satan and the angels who followed him. God never opened up the abyss. He never opened up that gate for you and I, because God had always prepared us to live for eternal life with him. And the scripture says that men sit in darkness in the shadow of death because they rebelled against the words of God. They contemn the counsel or despise the counsel of the Most High. When God would try to get your attention, you would either shake your fist at him and say, I don't want to hear this stuff, or whatever would come out of your mouth, you just don't want to listen to it. So you sit in darkness, in the shadow of death, bound in sin, and your sin. A lot of people back in the Old Testament, or the New Testament, so to speak, in the ancient days, a lot of those people were sick because of sin. And sick, sin causes sickness, separation, suffering, and sorrow. And one of the things that I've experienced is the separation of God. I mean, just imagine if the world didn't have God's presence, how or his law abiding in this earth. How many more killings would it be? God would have destroyed this earth a long time ago. But because of his love and his great mercy, he has allowed us and given us a chance to get back to him. We have one mediator between God and man, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Christ is the bridge. He makes up the gap for the sin that broke the gap. I mean, it broke that bridge to God. And Jesus Christ laid down his life. Imagine you laying down. The only way that you can get back to God is to walk on Christ's back. He laid himself down for you and I. What man would even lay himself down for another man? Would die for you? Scarcely for any man would even give his life for another man today. Because it's about, today it's about, it's, your, your, it's about yourself. Or you do for yourself. Everybody's thinking about themselves. But God thought so much about you and I that he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not die but have everlasting life. Should not perish. Have everlasting life. That life is in the son. I just want to show you in, in the scriptures. It talks about when in the very beginning. I always like to start in the beginning. Because that's where it always starts. And if we was talking to a man today, and, I, and whenever I talk to people, I always want to take them back to the beginning. You can go back to your own life and think about where did all this stuff started at? Why have I gotten to where I am? Who did what to me? And why am I, why am I still in this state of mind that I am? Somebody might have molested you. Somebody might have just treated you bad hurts you, and you're still living in that hurt, you're still walking in that pain of something that happened way back then. It's 40 years now, and it's done past. Those people have passed and gone on, but you still living in that same state of mind of what somebody did to you. See, there's a scripture in the Bible, and he brought his son into Jesus, and he asked Jesus, and he asked the man's father, he said, how long has this been happening to the boy? And he said, since he was a child. See, how long has this been happening to you? And I have to come, I had to come to that grip, I had to come to that point in my own life to think about some stuff. Why was I continuing to do the same stuff that I was doing? 
Because stuff happened to me way back then, and it affected me right now, see? But I had to deal with that stuff. I had to cut down that stuff, see? It was a curse, man. The only way to get rid of that stuff is to cut the tree down, see? And get to the very root of it. Why am I still doing the stuff that I do? And in order to get, get through that, I have to go back sometime. See? <laughs> See, in order, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've come from most of the time. So you have to go back sometime. You have to revisit, revisit your past if you want to get break, break, if you want to break free in your life. It's not to go back and just live in that guilt, but to go back and deal with it. See, in order for me, and I say this over and over again, that in order for me to go on, I have to confront some stuff. See, a lot of times we're not confronting things in our life. See, we just want to move it to the side, but the stuff is not going nowhere because what it is is what the enemy does. And just because I've been these certain places, it's a repeat offender. He keep doing the same stuff he did to you that he did last year and the years before that. And he won't stop doing it until you confront him. You see? But I want to, I want to show you in the scriptures, and I'm going to read a few. But in the book of Genesis, it talks about the very beginning when God created uh, Adam. That he, he breathed the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. See, he breathed that life the same breath that he breathed in him was the life that was in God. He breathed peace into him. He breathed joy. He breathed eternal life in him. Adam experienced what all that was. But see, you know, when Eve came along, they had this situation, and they was deceived by the, the serpent, and they fell. See, they no longer had, they no longer experienced that life. They lost that life that they had. And that was the eternal life, and that was that peace with God, and that was that joy and everything that they had from God. They lost that. It was because of sin. Sin is rebellion. See, sin is going the opposite way. That's what sin is all about. I don't want to hear God. They hid from God. So now they're hiding from God that they had a relationship with him in the beginning. Now you find them hiding from God. So they lost that life. So this is what we're trying to get back to. This is why we, all of us in this entire world is trying to get back into that life that we have with God. And that's why God sent his son so that we could get back to him. I want to read you a scripture in the book of John. And it explains itself. And it talks about how that life was in the sun. It says in John chapter 5, verse 24, I'll start. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him and that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. See, that is just not a physical death. But it's a spiritual death because we're spiritual beings. See, we have to die to ourself in order to experience the new life that God has provided for us. And it's in Christ. And my, mission, my goal tonight is to prove that to you. It's in the word of God. See, we die spiritually. Because if you would notice in the book of Genesis, he said, if you eat of this tree or this forbidden fruit, you shall surely die. He did not die just like that. See? His, his lifespan was short, but because we're spiritual beings, we die. No man has lived more, no longer than 120 years. No man. So we die spiritually, okay? We lose our relationship with God, so we're trying to get back to the place that we had or the life we had with God in the beginning. And that's why Christ came. That's my emphasis. It says that, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now in, when the dead will hear my voice, hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that shall hear shall live. The Bible talks about if you shall hear his voice today, harden not your heart. Don't refuse it. 
Because all of us in here, there, we know that there's a yearning for some truth. looking for is in him. It's not in the things that are tangible that we can touch, but it says he that comes before God must believe that he is God. See, that's the life that you're looking for. It's not in anything else or anybody else. And it goes down to say that then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven, the bread of God is which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. He is the life. It says that, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, we preach life to you tonight, and that life is in Christ. You know what my signature is? My signature is one life to live, because that's all you got. See, because you woke up today, because God has given you another chance to get it right. Thank God for the law. Thank God that he laid down the law that we could have, that the law is the knowledge of sin to let me know that I'm doing wrong. And you know what? Jesus Christ, the word of God justifies you. Because even though you've done wrong, God has given you mercy. He's given you justice on behalf of your weakness. Because we are all weak in our flesh. But see, the only way that you can be strong is taking up on this new life. See, because the enemy is a thief. The Bible says he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. See, that is the goal here is for us to receive life today. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, I need to become again. I need to become just like God intended me to be in the beginning. See, God created in us purpose, but we are not living out our purpose. We are living out the enemy's purpose, the devil's purpose, the drugs, the alcohol, the misuse of many things in our lives, the going astray, not going the right way. There are many things in our life that we know that I don't even have to sit up here and tell you that are wrong. Even a child knows that it's wrong. But just because it says that we are born in sin, we are shaped in iniquity. The first thing we know how to do is wrong. Don't do it. I'm going to do it anyway because it's in my nature to do that. See, when Adam did that, he affected the whole world, the entire human race. And what you do affect other people. Because a lot of us in here are adults and stuff. What you've done in your life have affected other people. But don't get it wrong. What they've done in your life have affected you. And there's a trickle-down effect. You understand? So what we want to do is change all that. We want to affect people the way God has affected us through Christ and changed our life. That's what we want to do. That is our mission. That's why we preach the gospel. It is the good news. The law and the prophets were until John, the Bible says. And the kingdom of God has been preached. And every man pressed into it. Why are they pressing into it? Because there's an urgency. But there's a fight pressing in. See, every day you get up, it's a challenge. And it's a summons to fight. I got to live. I don't want to die. See, it's a challenge every day. Every man is challenged every day. And the challenge is, what will you do? It's a summons. It's a calling. God is calling you. But if you refuse and you continue to refuse, you'll be devoured by the sword because God has laid down the law for us. But you know, I tell you tonight that tonight is the night to repent. To repent and to turn away from your sins. To turn away from your wrongdoings if you want to live. If you want to live again. If you want to experience 
the life that God has provided for us in Christ. Not religiously. I'm not talking about toting the Bible all the time everywhere you go. Because the word of God is written in your heart. I'm not talking about I got to go to every service. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about religiously. I'm talking because I know God. He's my father and I have a relationship with him. And I want to live right. I want to do right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about changing your life. My life ain't right. You got to make a decision within yourself and to know where you are right now and just think about it. Am I living right? Have I backed away from God? Have I refused to listen to him? It's not by coincidence that you are even in this building tonight. It's by divine purpose. See, you didn't even know this. God knew this. It ain't just because of food. Now, let me give you even just an analogy of coming out the cold. It's cold out there. Some of us came in here just because of that, but that's okay. But the same scenario, or spiritually speaking, is coming out of that cold weather, coming out of the lifestyle that we have engaged ourselves in, coming out of the drugs and the alcohol. All that stuff causes a frustration in your life and a, and a worse life than you ever want to live. You've gotten yourself into it. But you can get out of it tonight. You can come out tonight. It's called an invitation, man. The scripture talks about when Jesus said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I desire to gather you as hens gather their chicks. And you know what they said? We not even willing. We don't even want to come. But he gave them an invitation. See, nobody is going to be able to do this for you. And then I'm not, I can't even promise you, and the Bible don't even promise you the next day. Only today you have. You only 